Yo, what's going on, my people? I'm your boy Hussein, your host of the Art of Resilience podcast. This is episode seven. Welcome and thank you for tuning in. By now, you have seen the layers of resilience that has woven itself through so many of my guests. I am honored and privileged to have brought some of them stories to you so that you can further understand your own sense of resilience. You see, this is something that we all have. And for me, it started way back in that refugee camp. And so today I'm going to kind of walk you through back some stories and share a little bit about my childhood and how that connects to my day to day life today. So thanks again for tuning in. Um, I'm going to take you back a little bit further. So back in 1992, we, I remember my mom, my dad, my siblings, we're all standing in line. And we've been standing in line in this heat. And when I say heat, man, like I really sweat thinking about how hot it was in those days. We're in the middle of the desert and we're standing in line. And, you know, my mom has uh, got me covered under her, his, her, under her um, burqa, which is like this, you know, the all black cover that she wore and um though though that material looks thick it's actually a really light like silk like material and i remember my little sister and i would be basically side by side and she would cover us with it from the the direct sunlight and it kind of created this like weird breeze and so while we'd hang out there you know she'd give us little sips of water and what are we waiting for we're standing in line waiting outside these lined up shipping containers. And those shipping containers were filled with things like sandals, shoes, water, blankets, pillows, cans of tuna, MREs, things that we needed as refugees to survive and there were so many people you know from different organizations i couldn't name them if i tried but there's a lot of humanitarian organizations that help refugees and immigrants um you know in in situations like this specifically refugees um get necessities um things like pads for women things like you know honestly books and and um drawing materials painting materials that were just you know at the at the at that point i didn't know that these things were donated by people around the world but um or they were just given to us by the united nations but either way there were resources things that we needed um to help us survive the elements to help us survive the world that we were living in and while we're standing in line um you know, the waits are long. They're treacherous. And by the time it, your turn comes, you may not even get what most people got. And it depends on when you got there. Sometimes in these lines, fights break out. People get aggravated. People get hangry to the levels you can't even imagine. It's then you realize that without the smallest of things... It's extremely difficult to survive. It's extremely difficult to bear the weight. And if your whole family isn't there, they don't get their share. So therefore, it's not just you that has to suffer. Because my dad would have went out there. My brothers would have went out there and stood in line to grab us the things that we needed. But in order for me to get a pair of sandals, I had to be out there too. They didn't just trust that you had a family member that you were bringing something to. This is extremely sad when I think back it's extremely painful but it's important that we share this story because when we think about giving something to someone we don't know how it actually helps them we don't know what kind of dignity that that person receives and I'm sitting in a van that used to drive around the refugee camp. There were like the 1980s VW vans. And 
what they did with these vans is they would fill them with toys. So they would take the toys from these shipping containers and they wouldn't give them to the kids. And they would fill these vans up with these toys and they would have these soldiers toss them out of the van driving around the refugee camp taunting us making fun of us running behind these vans and uh though it was painful you know my brothers and i would like chase the van down and like try to get a toy gun or a, a toy soccer ball or something but it's almost as if they wanted us to fight over what was rightfully ours So we resorted to things like making our own toys. We resorted to things like making our own fun and, and way of creativity. You know, creativity comes out of necessity. And there is no necessity like when you're a refugee. When you literally make something out of nothing. So when we were standing in line, waiting to get our water, our fair share, some people were kind and they helped and they were resourceful. Some people were quite the opposite, extremely hard to work with, extremely frustrating. And sadly, those were the people that had authority. And so as refugees, you become very fearful of authority and what authority means and you have to submit and when we were standing in those lines we were always so fearful of what could happen and took what we got and walked away but on our way home back to our refugee tent there was laughter there was a sense of hope of love and community that I just got a new pair of sandals. They're $2 sandals, man. But I can still smell the plastic. They were brand new. And to put my crusty little feet in those sandals was like pure joy. There's a human element to this that I don't think a lot of people understand today. When we fill our closets with 15 pairs of shoes that we don't even wear. And there are kids out there right now, right now in 2021, who are barefoot running around their communities and cities and in, in swamp filled areas to no fault of their own. Because I was one of those kids. It wasn't my fault I ended up in a refugee camp. It wasn't my fault that the dictators and the puppets and the ruthless authoritarians did what they did to us. So I'm here to expose all of that. This is what I want to do with this show. Is expose and tell these stories. Because if not me, then who? And if not now, then when? Yes, I live in Portland, Oregon, man. It's beautiful here. I live in the Northwest. I see more trees than the average person. But it wasn't always like that for me. And it was probably not always like that for you, for your grandparents. You see, you're all immigrants. You were all once refugees. That's the status of the human being, is immigrant. You've traveled. And though you specifically didn't travel, somebody in your lineage did. And so for you to think that you're better than, smarter than, more beautiful than any of these people that now live in these conditions is absurd to me. It's beyond me. 
these are our people. They are human beings with dreams, ambitions, and a will and resilience that cannot be defined, no matter how many episodes I lay in front of you. But you see, in those refugee camps, that's where I learned. It was my gym. It was a place where I got to exercise my creativity, exercise and build my resilience. And though I watched it around me, I was always one to try to bring pleasure and hope, smiles and jokes to my brothers and telling them stories of my heroics, of how I would tie a garbage bag around my neck and say, I'm Superman. And if I had these powers, I'd lay out these soldiers and take everybody out of here. You see, in my way, I wanted to be a hero. I wanted to save people from what I saw on a day-to-day -day basis. And in some ways, I still want to do that. I do it through art. And I do it through creativity. And I'm trying to always take advantage of new resources and, and new ways to communicate this pain. At one point, I fell in love with just making simple paper airplanes. And it, I became obsessed coming up with every kind of curvature you can possibly think of. I was the king, absolute king of making paper airplanes. And we would toss these things around for days on end, creating competitions, telling stories, writing messages in them and passing them around. It was the beautiful way to connect these you know, kids around me to me. And kids would come up to me like, oh, make me one, make me one. You see, even at an early age, I was connecting and working with, with, with my community. Simple as a paper airplane. Creativity then went on to something like this, where we took trash bags, quite literally, the whole camp was filled with trash bags. And we, we would wrap we would get a rock and we stuff it in this trash bags and we would tighten one after the other one after this super tight, super tight. And we had like a soccer ball that we would play with till it was just beat to nothing. And we start the process all over again the next day. Those were moments of my childhood. We transformed nothing, quite literally garbage to things we played with, things that transformed our childhood into something to grasp. My father took canvas like this. This military canvas was our blankets. It was the floors in which we slept on. The canvas, <laughs> the canvas became a way for my father to tell our story. And uh, I remember walking around our refugee camp and uh, he took these canvases. God damn. I've told this story like a hundred times, bro. This piece of cloth, this canvas, was one of the most essential part of my life because my father took this stuff and he turned it into canvas paintings, man. And he told our stories through it and he poured his heart into it. And, you know, it helped me understand the world around me um, to the degree that I had no idea what was around me. When you're a child, there's nothing to compare yourself to. There's no self there's no reference and so you just take everything with what it is and i was just a happy kid i didn't really think about where i was too much i was between the ages of five and eight and so at that time it was really impressionable and but at the time i had my father do remarkable things around me 
and he taught me how to draw he taught me how to hold a paintbrush i remember for three months straight he told me to use the color red in my drawings nothing else then he would say i want you to take these colored pencils and use break bring them down to the nub and it was he was teaching me how to use my resources fully he was teaching me how to express myself fully and that's where i found my therapy the most really is telling not only my story but stories of others and and expressing a way to help others and so that's why all my t-shirts and the things that i've done the projects that i do all involve these stories that matter to me but also i know matter to people across the planet because you see there are no ways for those people to get through to us they're not on the news every day they're not you know unless we see them or come across something on social media rarely that we even know or think about people who are so less fortunate than us that are so in dire need of necessities that we don't even think a toothbrush matters we don't even think that that a backpack to just put some stuff in matters you know it's as if we forgot that our ancestors were immigrants it's as if we forgot that our ancestors were refugees it's as if we forgot that humanity since day one traveled explored sought other worlds it's is as if we forgot that europe was in the dark ages and that the arabs rescued them with our knowledge with our science and then they had the audacity to try to erase us from history and made us the refugees the ones that are now plagued with the pandemic dropping nothing but bombs when all we did was give knowledge the number one exporters of knowledge were middle easterns this is why i love my people so much and this is why i hope my people start to love themselves more and bring back those those tremendous ways of of health and unity courage and beauty love and respect and most of all unity you know whether it was a canvas or a or a garbage bag we always have had this innate deep essence of how to create something from nothing and we got to bring back this idea of love and the fact that we are all humans living on a planet called earth that if you go into space there are no lines that divide us there are no walls that 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 weren't human made there there are no things where we you know animals migrate everything migrate everything moves due to climate due to an urge to seek something better if something uh, 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 a pond dries up they go find another one that's what we do we grow like that and i want to normalize that because here's what's happening refugees still exist and they're growing by the numbers and the traumatic experiences are going to exponentially grow they're even worse than mine and if we don't create ways to heal these things and heal these people and help them out our problems are going to increase so if we don't become a part of the solution, we are automatically going to become part of the problem. If we're talking about war, that's one thing that creates refugees, just one. But if we're talking about climate change, which is upon us now, it's going to create even more of a desperate need for people to migrate and move to other places. So we have to, we have to create a welcoming we have to create policies and an understanding and a more compassionate heart for people to 
come live with us. Come live amongst us. Help us grow our own communities where we can further thrive and prosper. And use their ways, use their culture, use their identities to help all of us grow and understand the human experience. It is our duty, it is our responsibility to maximize our human experience. And so I challenge you to give with your heart, to smile more, to go out there and understand different cultures, different people, different stories. It's how we can grow our compassion and muscle. It's how we can create policy and create jobs and prosperity for everyone. But most of all, it's how we can now do things like fill shipping containers with goods and resources and get them to where they need to go, to people that truly need those things. So when you buy a t-shirt right now, it's nothing. We donate five bucks to buying things like bottles of water, pads for women, um, t-shirts and clothes, you know, little, little simple things. They are nothing, but there are plenty of organizations. If you don't want to work with us, plenty of organizations that are helping so many. Um, so I encourage you to seek them out and help give back and bring those stories to your home, teach them to your children, give back in your own way, whatever it is through your own art. Because the refugee crisis isn't just starting. It's always been around. And the immigration process hasn't just been bad. It's always been around. And it's up to us to improve those things for generations ahead. I'm Hussein Albiati. I know this was an emotional episode and deep stories from within. But I hope that they can connect to you and get you to feel what it feels like to be someone displaced. Because it is truly near and dear to me. I hope you learned something today. Again, I'm your boy Hussein. I'm your host. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Keep building your resilience. Peace.